Hey guys, Mike Rosart here for another YouTube installment talking about real estate investing with Fraser Sutherland. And we are here going to talk about just some general questions. We just shot a few videos about uh, investing in real estate. We talked about in previous videos the three ways that you appraise a property. This is how you determine the value of a property. We talked about the three persona profiles, the three ways to make money in real estate and which type of pro persona profile you want to be. So if you're getting a little confused about some of the jargon like any arbitrage or Johnny Cashflow, at the end of this video, check out those links. I'll put the links to those videos in the bottom of this description so you guys can follow those videos and then it'll make sense when we start talking about the more complex equations um, like we were just talking about there, about how you might uh, have arbitrage opportunities as any arbitrage. Um, if you bought a single family property and converted it to a rental property, it goes from being comparable analysis type of property to potentially an income approach valuation for the property, in which case you'd use the equation um, rental income minus property insurance, property taxes, and all the utilities, gas, hydro, water, etc. gives you equals your net operating income, net operating income divided by the cap rate in your local market, which in London, Ontario, Canada is about an eight cap rate. So you divide by 0 0.08, boom, that gives you a value for that property. Super easy to calculate. If you're not doing the income approach and you're buying a rental property and you haven't done this calculation, um, you should do it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which I will do on all of mine now. Yeah, exactly. But hey, you know what? You, you made a good point that, that you've got a few properties now and, and you haven't used that. And in my first few properties, I didn't use any of these technical analysis terms. I didn't know how a property was really valued. I know my real estate agent talked about across the street a property sold for X, and but I didn't know how to do a comparable analysis where I could adjust them to apples to apples. How do you take an orange property and compare it to an apple? Yeah, property, I had no, right? I, no idea of how to value it on an income approach. More, I mean, you'd take your spreadsheet out and you'd run your numbers. You'd yeah, try and figure yeah. out what your ROI is, but like there's- That's so what you many, gotta be doing, run the yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah. But no, I had no idea of, of figuring out how values on income approach. And which, before I met people in my local network, like I tuned into Bigger Pockets. Bigger Pockets is awesome. Check out biggerpockets.com. There is a wealth of information on there. They have an awesome podcast. Um, and there are a ton of people. There's local chapters too. There's a local chapter here in London that you can go out to. There's a lot of overlap between them and the group we started London on Fire. A lot of the same people in the group. But, uh, you know, that would be the place to go to learn about real estate, right? It's biggerpockets.com. And uh, it's are they just, Canadian or in the States? Are they both? They're, yeah, they're US. US, okay. In the States. But there, like, there, is art there are articles that are valuable still, regardless of your geographical. Yeah, like yeah. area, right? Yeah, um, but yeah, it isn't curious. necessarily Canadian focused. That's a bit of a drawback, but yeah. there's still tons of great value on there. Yeah, when they start talking about LLCs and 1031s, you're kind of like, yeah, the 1031 exchange is not a what thing is here. this? And then you figure out it doesn't apply. <laughs> yeah, I wish it did. I'm almost uh, given I sold a lot of my properties and would have been nice to do it. Yeah, an exchange. But yeah, so what do you want to talk about? What, what do you think we should share with the audience about real estate investing? Um, so I'm more have questions and then you share away and then I'll ask more detailed questions okay. if that's all. And if I'm off base, just ring me back in. Sure. Yeah. So I think w one that I'd like to talk more like just generally about is corporations. Um, so like my understanding is like there's, you know, it's an added expense. Um, but I think there's some advantages in terms of risk reduction. So like they, they talk about risk reduction, but then I've also heard that to get a good corporate rate, you need, to basically sign on as guarantor anyway. So that's like true. Your, your risk isn't really reduced. So I I guess I was wondering whether there are any sort of other benefits to it. Um, like now de haven't delayed written, income maybe. Yeah, so I haven't really written out any prepared response. This is just me off the top of my head. Yeah, same. <laughs> what I think, and I haven't heard this question before, so it's a new question. But um, at a certain point, I think it can make sense to have a corporation once you get a number of properties. There are, when you have say less than five properties, there are distinct advantages to owning the property personally. And I think a good umbrella liability insurance policy will protect you in the same way a corporation could. Okay, that's kind um, of what I was wondering. Yeah, so that's sort of my thought is that the benefits are really, or sorry, the costs to having corp corporations, so the having the corporate tax returns filed by an accountant, having the lawyer set the corporation up. Now you can go online and do a lot of it online. Um, setting up corporations, but the additional fees with like my real estate lawyer would charge more to close it likely in a corporation than he would personally. Um, and I don't know, maybe it's because I have a discount uh, real estate lawyer and I, yeah, I don't know. But it, typically I found there's just more paperwork, more 
um, challenges with closing the corporation, more costs, but there are benefits, of so course. So are you incorporated then? Like, did I'm you not, have, no, you didn't. Okay. No, um, I'm not incorporated in, <laughs> on 15 properties. It probably should have been. I now have four, so um, I hold them all personally. The reason I did that is, so there's some advantages to having a corporation set up, right? One being income splitting. If you have multiple partners, you can yeah. sprinkle yeah, income. Yeah, that's a clear one for um, sure. And ki kids eventually. You actually have to right? set up a three-tiered structure for it to be the most effective, right? You want a holding company that holds the actual properties. You want another holding company, I think, that holds um, the shares to that company, so you're a layer removed. You want a management company, like a property management company, that you can bill out. And the property management company can run as an active business, right? So active businesses are taxed at like 15%, whereas holding real estate companies are taxed at like 50%. So holding property inside of a corporation, just like for the property to produce income, it's taxed very unfavorably. Uh, and I'm not an, I'm not a tax expert here. Yeah, I'm already. I'm not a legal <laughs> expert, but essentially my understanding is you need a three tiered corporate structure for it to make um, for you to have those real benefits, like for instance liability protection. Um, but yeah, from a tax perspective, owning properties inside of a corporation versus personally, unless you're making like 150, 200 grand a year personally, mm -hmm. or you're in the top bracket, I think it's like 220 thousand or higher. So if you're if your income, if you and your spouse are both 220 thousand dollars higher. In income, then it, let's say you're a couple buying the properties, which is how I structure a lot of mine. My wife and I split the properties. We we basically just one get, name per property, though, right? Or do you go both? We go half. Oh, okay. Um, on the properties, the reason we do that is so we can income. We can basically income split. So we'll okay. set up on certain properties, say 60-40, saying I'm the active managing person. Mm -hmm. She's maybe 60-40 on another, but we can income split nicely that way. All the rental income gets split. Um, the capital gains get split. So that's sort of a nice thing on a personal perspective. The reason I like it so much is because when you run the any arbitrage opportunity in your first two or three years, when you're building, check out my video guys, the Rosar Real Estate Snowball, because I talk about how anyone can get to 10 properties in under three years. And I mean anyone, you make $50,000 a year in a full-time job, you're good. That's all you need. Um, but but the, key, the key piece being that it's hard to get mortgages in a corporation. It's easier to get mortgages I found personally because you have that day job income. You can personally guarantee the corporation and get a mortgage, but when you hold it in a corporation, you pay higher tax rates. Uh, or sorry, not high, higher interest rates. Higher tax rates, yes, that's true. But also higher interest rates on those loans. So if you buy a property and say, hey, my intention is to live in the property, and you live in it for a few months or whatever, you can often get the bank. There was a time when I could get 2% interest fixed loans. And as a corporation, I'd be born at three and a half, four percent so leverage being your best friend, cheap debt, cheap leverage is your best friend to the yeah. strategy working really, really well. So there are some distinct advantages to getting a mortgage. It's easier to get approved when you do it when you apply personally and you own it personally. The I guess the bank just likes the fact that it's it's that way. The other thing that I really took advantage of from a tax perspective was, you know, I'm gonna have fifty or hundred thousand dollars in receipts. And so in the first year or two of owning a property, I can write all those off and have huge operating losses. So my first three years, um, I had such huge operating losses on these properties that I paid no tax on my day job. I offset all of the income. Oh, I got a nice. huge tax. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I literally paid no tax for like several, like, I don't think I paid tax the first time until I was like almost, so until I was 24. It was the first time I ever really paid tax because I always write offs. You can carry them backwards sometimes. Um, anyway, so you can carry them forward for sure. Um, and so that's really nice to have those those losses to carry forward. There are some real distinct advantages to owning property personally until you get to a certain scale and size. So once you're bringing in, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars in net income on these properties, there's no difference between owning it in a corporation and personally. In fact, there's some advantages. But under that level, I think there's some real advantages to owning things personally. And the way you get around the liability, everyone says, you know, I'm so worried about the liability. What if I get sued? The big thing is, you know, have a good insurance policy set yeah. up. Um, an umbrella policy, maybe ten million on all your properties, and you can get that set up. A lot of companies will do an umbrella policy on all your properties together. So instead of a million or two on each property, I would have one big umbrella policy, say five million dollars, and that's going to protect you. Like I, I don't know any landlords that have ever been sued, but maybe there are some. There probably are some that oh, have. For sure, <laughs> like I'm sure yeah. they're out there. Yeah. But um, it's a lot rarer than you might think. It's it's just not a not as big of a risk as what people think it is. Uh, most of the time, you can handle things, you know without going to, through the courts, unless there's a fire yeah. or something, in which case your insurance company would come good. Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully your insurance company comes good. I think they would. The other sort of one I was wondering about, it was just just from reading the paper, is um, passive income in a corporation. So basically, I think the idea is you 
you incorporate and then you buy stocks or whatever in that corporation. And then Trudeau's pretty hard on. Uh, yeah, so that's why. I, that's why. Yeah, it was like they were cracking down on, it, but the amount still was it seemed high to me. For it is still high. It's, it's like more than fifty thousand yeah. or something like that. I was like, whoa, that's yeah. a good idea. I mean, um, like especially if you have like a good chunk of money to that you are doing that investment with, right? I mean. Yes, I, I think my understanding was it had to be an active corporation. So you need a minimum five employees for it to be an active corporation and your, your and sole source of income can't be your own properties. So if I had a property management company that was getting build out feed for managing properties, that would be an active corporation. And so I get like favorable tax treatment, okay. but passive corporations or like your whole, the whole design is just to own property and get rental income from that. They are taxed very unfavorably, which is why you have three tiered structure Wait. to get most of that income into the active corporation out of the passive corporation. So you'd bill out a huge property management expense, theoretically, to the holding the corporation that holds the properties. So um, so the active corporation, so there's the active, passive, and then there's the holding for both of them, is that right? You know, I'm not an expert on this, but okay. that's been something that I've heard in passing. And again, I haven't set this up before. Don't take this advice as legal advice. Don't take my advice at all on this stuff. Um, at a high level, my understanding is that you'd want to get the income out of the, the passive holding shell company because it's taxed very highly. And you those are the ones who, the active so the pa those are the ones who own the actual properties. And then the active is the ones that is sort of billing the passive, is Correct. that right? And yeah. then the holding. And they're, they're taxed at 15% because they're an active business. That's, so that's the advantage. That's the advantage is that. Get the, get the income into the, into the, so you're going to create a ton of income inside of the property management company by expensing huge invoices. Yeah. Okay. Um, you gotta be reasonable. The CRA is going to test the limits. They're going to ask. Is this reasonable? So you gotta figure that stuff out. But the nice thing about owning a corporation is that you can value your time. So if you go fix a toilet leak at your property, you can bill yourself a hundred bucks. When you own properties personally, you can't bill yourself for your time. It's illegal. Yeah. So um, that's true. Yeah. That's something to think about. There are distinct advantages to both both approaches. Um, consult your accountant, your lawyer. Um, I could do a video if I if I brush up on. I can go do some reading and then yeah, I can do a more a, informed video. Yeah. But it's sort it's of a high level. That's my understanding. Um, so then, and then for active, so just cause I'm still curious about this mm -hmm. thing. So you need five employees and it needs to not be your only source of income. I believe, so I, I'm, I'm not sure. I believe an active corp requires minimum of five full-time employees okay. to be, to be considered active. Um, also, and that's, I think if it's primary source of income is from your own properties, um, I might be wrong on that. And that might've changed since I last read about that in 2014, okay. but, um, that's my understanding is to be about five full-time employees to be an active um, corp. That said, if you're an active corp that managed other properties and your own, I think that would okay, also qualify yeah. as an active corp because okay. the whole purpose isn't just to expense yourself, right? Yeah. So there's some of the distinct advantages. And like you said, when you have, you can hold income inside of a corp and sprinkle it to yourself or your family members. You can put, I can put my daughter on there and sprinkle her 8,000 a year if she's helping yeah. clean toilets or whatever, sure. or if she's a marketing gimmick, if I put her in my ads or something in some way. Don't do um, that. I'm just, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that, but I'm just saying, right? Like, yeah. um, you, you, there are ways to sprinkle income to your kids and your family through a corporate, corporate structure that you can't do when you own things personally in the same way. So there are distinct advantages. Talk to your accountant about those advantages before you make the plunge and spend 5,000 a year on. Is that about what it is? To manage a three, three tiered structure. And if you hire an accountant and you hire a lawyer that to do it all. That seems like you'd really need to be. Working with a lot all of the money paperwork, like you have to have annual shareholder meetings. Yeah. There's a lot of little things you have to do, a lot of little pains in the ass. You could probably do it for like a thousand dollars if you were really frugal about it and you set it all up yourself. And yeah, but it's just a it's a unnecessary cost, I think, in when you're starting out for sure. And there are actually disadvantages when you have less properties and your income isn't that high personally um, between you and your spouse or yourself alone. So yeah, I don't think in the beginning it makes sense to incorporate that, unless you're just that really was sort of what I was thinking too. It's more just that investment side that I was kind of curious about because yeah if you could oh um okay. another question before I forget um the talk about like corporations I think people talk about getting double tax sometimes um I don't really understand that because I would think that you would like the corporation if your corporation is paying tax and then when you receive so, income as an employee I would think the in the amount that the corporation is paying you would be a deduction right yeah, so, so I don't know what double tax. There's, no, there's no double taxing, right? What they're talking about is that the corporation is taxed, and then when you withdraw the dividends, you're taxed again. 
uh, at a personal level. But there's a dividend gross up. Um, typically, they'll, they'll gross up that dividend. It's really complex, but in the tax calculation, they'll adjust for the fact that corporations so already pay tax. Set up that pronounce again. So corporation. Yeah. So corporation pays tax, and you pay tax personally when you take the money out of the corporation. Yes. So that's where the double taxing I think comes from. Um, my understanding is that you basically get a dividend tax credit when you gross up the dividend before you pay tax on it. Um, so that credit accounts for the fact that you've already paid tax in your corporation. Oh, okay. so that's sort of at, at a high level that explains why, um, you know, why people talk about the double tax. It's not really a thing. Okay. Um, theoretically, someone with no income personally could take a corporate tax, um, corporate tax dividend, like someone who's already paid tax in the corporation, those earnings, those retained earnings are paid out as a dividend. And that dividend um, would actually provide tax credit for that individual. They would get back the tax that the corporation already paid if they had no, oh, no income. Because they'd be yeah. So if someone who's retired or something could effectively pay tax in the corporation and then get a credit personally. So they, it would adjust for the fact that they have no income. Um, so yeah, double taxing isn't, isn't a thing, I don't think, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. If you're a CPA, um, maybe if Mitt watches this video or, or Matt McKeever, also a CPA, if you guys watch this video and I'm totally wrong, let me know in the comments. Um, I'm happy to be wrong because at least we're talking about this and we're getting yeah. that information out there. And I think I'm making it clear that I have no idea about, about <laughs> the double taxing, so yeah, I, I can't be I have wrong. some idea. <laughs> um, I worked towards my CA CPA, so I have worked as an accountant in the past and I took tax courses in 2012 and 2013. So I do have some knowledge, but again, not licensed CPA. I took a job in consulting and I quit my job at KPMG. So I didn't finish that route. Um, these are not well-educated opinions. They are somewhat educated opinions. What else do I talk well, about? Any other questions about real estate investing that the audience probably uh, has the same questions? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely got a few more. I've sort of been like going through like a bunch of your videos and a bunch of Matt's videos. So I got some nice. stockpiled, yeah. Um, so the, uh, the Matt, next Matt question Peter. I sort of had was, um, and like you talked about it a bit in terms of when you buy a property, you buy it in your name and your partner's name, both on title. Um, so you can do that. Yeah. It's I, way too. yeah. So like I haven't been doing that, but part of the reason why is cause I was thinking theoretically, um, like if you're, if the mortgage, you know, in terms of them looking at your like debt to asset ratio, whether like, cause if you're on title, then you're Theoretically, on the you for get all of more, it, right? You get more mortgages separately than you could together. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. So it's That's like, actually you, get, true, you get that more mortgage if you're separate, but you need to claim all the income until you're that. Yeah. So I, the choice I made was because one, it was easier to qualify with both of our incomes together. Okay. So that's how I was able to get like yeah. nine mortgages at a lender banks when, you know, it's, it's often hard to get those kind of mortgages and borrow millions of dollars. Um, it was easier to do it together. And so that's why we did it that way. Okay. Um, my income isn't all that great on itself. And so together we could service the debt better um, if we both qualified together. And so we did it that way for that reason. And the second reason was that we wanted to income split. Yeah, the income split. So if split I sold sense, the property sure. or had the rental income that I could split it, it'd be from a tax advantage purpose. Allow me to get to financial independence, which was the whole goal, right? Is yeah. financial independence, retire early. Like the goal is fire. For me, that was, that was the whole burning desire behind going to real estate. I just use it as a means to an end. And I ended up enjoying it in a lot of ways, but I also ended up hating it. It's a ton of work to renovate properties, deal with problem tenants. You know, I had 70 tenants at peak and that's a lot of texting, a lot of work. So that's why, if, yeah, I mean, it is what it is guys, but everyone makes their own decision based on their own personal stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that approach. I think you could put some properties in your wife's name and it would be, have the same effect from a tax perspective. You basically each have a property and there are some joint venture partnerships to talk about like how you might structure a joint venture that wasn't in a relationship. That's on the list too. Okay, I'll so. that question. So you might structure a joint venture in a way, there's so many creative ways to structure joint ventures. Sorry, I'm just gonna readjust. Yeah, no, we've been going Add a little life bit. to the video because yeah. we're getting a little, uh, my back's getting a little sore. But um, yeah, so you might structure a joint venture partnership in such a way that you, if you trust the person, you have to have a layer of trust, you would sign a joint venture agreement between each other and one person would go apply and get the mortgage in their name and buy the property in their name and then you would provide half their down payment. And so you'd own it together, you'd split all the expenses together. From a tax perspective, you'd claim that you own half this property, but on title, one person owns it. The reason you do that is because you can each get, say, five mortgages pretty easily. And so a joint ventureship partner, partnership it's together would you only get five properties and you'd be maxed out. But if you each bought them separately and then had joint venture agreements, 
where you crossed it in such okay. a way, you could buy a lot more properties and get more mortgages. And at the end of the day, cheap debt makes real estate great. You leveraged five to one when you're 20% down. So five to one leverage um, takes a 5% return net and makes it 25%. So that's part of what allows Johnny Cashflow to really prosper and same with any arbitrage strategies to making money in real estate. Oh, I had a question. Does that, does that make my, sense? Yeah, no, it makes sense. The, uh, oh, so my question there was for the, like, on title. So if you have just one person on title. Yeah. Um, and then splitting that rental income. Um, does the, like, and I, I think the answer is no. But, like, for in terms of claiming rental income, like, so say your part, you and your partner, if you're here on 60 and she's on 40, does she have to claim 40% of the rental income or can you do it however you want? Like as long as, I figure as long as somebody's claiming all the rental income. Typically you want it to, yeah, all the income has to be claimed yeah. first. Um, so like if, if you wanted to claim system, I think is the key. Okay. So you can't go from 80, 20 one year to, you know, 10, 10 the next year. It just isn't a good way to do it. Okay. Um, let's do one more question. I think the battery's going to die. Sure. So. Yeah. Uh, one more question. Um, is there any, like, do you know of any like place where you can sort of see or view kind of like stock joint venture agreements or like biggerpockets.com I think might have some templates. You could Google okay. and find some. Yeah. Um, also like just meet up with people in your local network and they'll share templates they've used. I could share one that I've used. Um, yeah. That, that would be, I just basically just wrote up one in word and saved it as a PDF. It was very like, we just kind of made up our own, but and then did you probably get checked ones. by like legal or I didn't. Anything. So like a lot of my partnerships have been like more handshake agreements. Yeah. Where like they're people I I've gotten to know and I trust, yeah. and they're well ingrained in the network, and so we wouldn't screw each other because we all have the same sort of friends, and there's a bit of a trust factor there. That's not best practice. Um, we have joint venture agreements, and I don't go as far as like just a handshake. There's obviously some sort of agreement. Yeah, that's. But it's not <laughs> super super trust. binding. Yeah. yeah. Um, you probably like uh, there are agreements you can get that you can put in there. Um. As I grow my real estate portfolio, I'll be doing more joint venture partnerships because of the fact that I'm tapped out on mortgages at a certain point. And so, yeah, that's, that's just the, the nature of, of joint venturing. And, and when you structure things, it's up to the partners and you kind of figure out what works for each person. And Yeah. It, it'd be cool to see some of those temp, like if there are templates, like some of those templates and even yeah. like, I know we said one more, but like similar thing for sort of like hard money lending, like. I'm curious because like that one, it's like you're not necessarily always best friends with the person kind of thing. So like if you're loaning out, I, I have some hard money, know, two hundred hard money lending agreements. I do yeah, a lot of hard money lending. Grand, then it's like I would want a lawyer. Ideally, you know? you'd want to structure it as, yeah. a, as a second mortgage on the property. In which case, like then it's just security against title. Okay, so you're safe. Okay, um, but if it's just like an unsecured loan, then yeah, definitely get the paperwork in order. I have a good agreement that I use that I bought off legal templates. Okay. Um, like a law depot kind of thing. Sure. Um, so it's already been reviewed by a lawyer. The other thing I wanted to share was, um, yeah, if you guys like this approach to, I'm just experimenting with different ways to create videos. And if you guys like this type of approach where we do question and answer, or maybe you want to do question and answer with me, I'll do a YouTube live. I'm cool to, to do that and answer questions. Let me know. I'm happy to experiment with different platforms. If this type of interaction was cool. Non-rehearsed. Yeah. Non-rehearsed. <laughs> just, you know, ask me questions. I'm happy to do that. I have a wealth of real estate information that I'd like to get out of this brain and share with you guys. So I'm not by any means an expert. I'm always learning and there's always ways to improve. And likely when I share things, you might say, why are you doing it this way? And I might say, I've just always done it this way. And maybe it's wrong. But, yeah. You know, at least us discussing it, we get to the truth um, and we get to the best answers. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like it. Um, please share it on social media and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers right now. I know that sounds pathetic. The goal is eventually a thousand. Start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere, <laughs> you know. And uh, this is a brand new channel, yeah. so let's let's get to 100 subscribers and then to a thousand. So okay, thanks for answering all my questions. Today. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Thanks again for being on the channel and, and asking the questions because I think investors are really they're gonna enjoy the candid nature. Yeah. Of the the back so and forth. Is. So. Cheers, everyone.